Hello, this is Vern, and if you're craving a relationship that is more emotionally or spiritually fulfilling than what you've experienced in the past, if you ultimately want to feel seen, loved, self-expressed, and heard, you need to learn the art of opening your heart to the right guy at the right pace. And because it's scary to do that, or sometimes unsafe, I'm going to be revealing seven specific steps that show you it's okay to open your heart to that guy and when you should pause or stop. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. There's two types of relationships fundamentally that you can go for and there's anywhere in between. So on one extreme, you're going to have a relationship that's more basic. Uh, it's easier to come by, by the way. A more basic relationship is one that has maybe elements of validation, has elements of uh, maybe a sense of adventure, there's a physical sense of release. So it's something that allows you to feel some emotions, sometimes intense emotions, but it doesn't have the longevity, it doesn't have the intimacy, it doesn't have the level of friendship, and it des definitely doesn't have the same meaning that the other one has, but it's easier to come by. Now, the second type of relationship on the other side of the spectrum is something that is deep. There's emotional intimacy. There's depth. There's the feeling of being seen, felt, witnessed, embraced, fully known. My wild guess, if you're watching my videos, is that that's what you're searching for. You don't want to settle for something that is a basic relationship or maybe friend with benefits or a guy that you don't know where the thing is leading up to. It feels good in the moment, but there's no connection in between. You're probably tired of that BS and you want something deeper even though you haven't found the right way to get it. So in that extreme, in, the, in that separation between something that's basic and something that's deep, there's two different levels of skills that are required to be able to get the deep type of relationship. And the fundamental thing that needs to take place for you to reach that summit is for your heart to be more and more open and his heart as well. So there's a reality of two human souls connecting and seeing each other and witnessing the truth, the vulnerability, the beauty, the beautiful things and the ugly things and understanding the totality of that human being. Ultimately, that's what we want to be witnessed at the highest level, but it's really scary. And it's really scary for three different reasons. The first reason why it's scary is because if you've been hurt in the past, part of what you're looking for right now is the foolproof way of how can I get the result I want without risking. And because you're so smart and you may have been fed with some lies along the ways, including other videos you may have watched, I'm gonna shoot to you straight. You cannot experience the depth of relationship you seek without risking getting your heart broken again. Now, before you throw a tomato at me, let me just share that even though you're risking uh, getting your heart broken again, you can't avoid that, you can minimize the risk, which is what we're going for. Similar to if you have a meeting and it's 30 miles away from your house, you could walk because driving is unsafe, or you can do the best you can to be as safe as, you, as possible when driving, so you can travel 30 miles in 30 minutes instead of having to walk for several hours and maybe miss the meeting. There's a difference between driving drunk at night without eyeglasses or driving in the day fully aware, fully sober. I mean, the risk is significantly different. So that's the first reason why it's hard because you have to be willing to risk. But what I want to show you is how you can reduce that risk so that it's far less likely for you to get your heart broken again. Second reason why it's hard is because you have to be willing to tap into and open your heart to two of your deepest fears. The first fear is not being enough. See what happens if you connect with men who don't want to go the distance, don't want to go to depth, and they leave you. Well, it's kind of painful, but it's almost understandable and predictable, and part of you says, well, that wasn't necessarily what I was hoping for anyway, so next. But if you open your heart and you're fully seen, and after being fully seen, somebody says, I can't do this, then there's that fear of not being enough. And that's a fear that no matter how hard you try, you will not get rid of in this lifetime, but you can minimize it. It's embedded in your nervous system when you're born. That's a survival mechanism. The second fear that we all have, we all share, is not being loved. So if you're afraid of not being enough, not being loved, then the more you open your heart, the more things at stake, the more possibilities you have for someone to fully see you, witness you, and not only not being enough for him, but not being loved by him. So those are the three things we're contending with right now. And again, 
the steps that I'll be sharing with you right now is to mitigate the risk of that happening and for your nervous system to get to a centered place where you can take healthy risks on yourself and still get what you want. The two biggest problems I have found with women who want to open their hearts to men is on one end of the spectrum, women who open their heart far too quickly. They carry their heart on their sleeve, as they like to say, and almost like a positive thing. And they go all in without knowing the guy, without understanding if he's safe or unsafe, without testing or validating certain things. And they express so much in a short amount of time that sometimes the guy gets scared. But if he doesn't get scared, but there's not enough emotional investment, then he might use that against you. He might manipulate in some way, given the information that he has, and then you feel heartbroken. And like the connection that you felt in a maybe fake way, because you shared too much too quickly, and you feel so intensely connected, it's gone in one day. The other of the spectrum, uh, other side of challenges is when you are afraid of being vulnerable. So instead of sharing everything all at once, you don't share anything at all. You have guards and mesh and barbed wire around your heart that prevents you from sharing enough with men and being pursued and developing that urgency or that sense of, I want to continue connecting with this woman. There's a way for me to add value to her life. That's not happening because you have a poker uh, face, uh, metaphorically speaking. You're not sharing enough. You're not being vulnerable enough. And that doesn't create the connection you want. And you don't feel seen or heard or self-expressed, sometimes even with your friends, not just with men. So there's some space in between that's healthy for you to navigate. But I'll give you one analogy so you understand the, the, the full spectrum of why this is challenging. If you share so much at the beginning, that's like the trailer that you watch for a movie that shares just a little too much. You're watching the trailer, seems interesting, you're about to say, I want to watch it, and then they show you the part where they start kissing, and the part where they break up, and the part at the end where they get married. I mean, I've seen trailers that are blatantly telling you the end of the movie, which is just not fun to watch. It just removes the need to watch it. It's just like too much information. On the other end of the spectrum, if you're someone who's not expressing enough, you're like the mystery, the greatest mystery. But there's you know, mystery novels that are fun and mystery novels that are boring. That's the feeling, not like this is a mystery that I want to uh, decipher, but this is a mystery that I'm not, I don't feel compelled to move forward. So what can we do about it? I'm gonna share that with you in just a second, but before I do, one of the things you're going to need, if you want to make this work for you, beyond validating and vetting the, vetting the man, is a solid dating strategy that is not just based on actions, but emotions as well. And if you want to develop one, and if you want to learn how I recommend doing it and go beyond the concepts of this video, make sure to hit the first link on the description of this video, and you'll see a page that looks like this. Enter your name and email, and you can start watching my free masterclass, my dating cure, how to be uh, pursued by quality men if you're a high achiever. So this next part of the video, I'm going to explain the framework and then I'm going to show you the, the specific steps. The framework is, imagine that there's a light, a light bulb, and there's a couple of different ways to turn on that light bulb. And that light bulb represents your heart opening. You can have a regular switch which makes your heart closed and then open. It's a binary thing, zero and one, closed and open, or you can use a dimmer. A dimmer is something that allows the intensity of the light bulb to be modulated and, and uh, increased at your own pace. As you open your heart, the only way I would ever suggest opening your heart to a man that doesn't put you in a Russian roulette type of risk, especially if you've been burned before, is one where there is light, there's a dimmer instead of a switch, and you're opening gradually. And what determines the, how gradually you open? Two things. One, which you cannot do away with, which is time. No matter how awesome the guy is, he showed incredibly powerful the first week. It's just one week. So one thing will be time. That's the first thing I'm starting with right now. It's going to take time regardless of how awesome he is for you to share more. The second one is going to be his actions, his level of investment, his effort, his level of respect, his enthusiasm, his willingness to pursue you in a healthy versus smothering way or detached hot and cold way. So those two things, time first and foremost, and then the way he invests in you, will show you how safe it is to open your heart. The first one is, he is fundamentally looking for the same type of relationship that you're looking for, right? Why? Because you can open your heart to a man, but if you're opening your heart to a man who wants to go to a different destination than the one you're going to, 
you're setting yourself up for failure. You're, you're, there's going to be a point, maybe not too far into the relationship, where there's an impasse. Why? Because he wants something different than you want. He has different values. He has a different angle. And if your heart is open for the sake of opening because it feels so good and you feel validated and seen and heard, but it's the wrong guy, then you're going to learn, you're going to teach yourself to to experience pain from this process, which will make you far less likely to do them in the future. So the first one, make sure that what he wants is what you want. And a simple question you need to ask at the beginning of connecting with someone is, what are you looking for in a relationship? And let the reality of what he's sharing hit you and make you <laughs> take one step or the other. And second one is, you want to do this, and it will take time for you to connect with the guys and start sensing this, but you want a guy who is looking and craving depth and who is curious to get to know you. So opening your heart will be far less easy if you are attempting to open your heart with a guy who's not craving that same sense of depth, who maybe wants a relationship that's more basic, or who feels ultimately scared of being vulnerable in such a way that you're doing the majority of the work. You're opening, sharing, expressing, and he's basically saying, great, I like it, and maybe sharing just a little bit more. It needs to be uh, a, a mutual thing. So make sure that as you get to know this man, you don't drive the entire set of the conversation. You allow him to ask you questions, you gauge his level of interest, and, you, and even the topics of conversations, you want to make sure that he is able to bring things to the table that allow you to share a little bit more about yourself. Next one is you need to choose a man who is present with you. The entire thing you're seeking in a relationship, which is that feeling of being ultimately seen, felt, and heard, is impossible if you're sharing and opening your heart and the man isn't present with you. What does presence mean? He's there. He listens. He wants to know. He's not thinking of 20 other things at that time. He's not looking at his cell phone, texting as you're sharing something important. He, he has that time capped up that he's spending with you to figure out how things can go, to energize the relationship, to get to know you and to get you to know him. Have fun at the same time going the distance. So it's a combination of depth and fun that you're seeking. Next one is you want a guy who in small and big ways respects your boundaries. And there's going to be in the progression of the courtship, in the progression of dating someone, multiple opportunities for you to gauge that. So if a guy doesn't respect boundaries early on, in terms of your time, in terms of the way you like to connect with them, in terms of how long it takes you to have sex or touch him or kiss him, if he's not respecting those things, it's showing you early on that when more things are at stake, when there's more from you to him, he may not be able to respect you, right? So you want a guy who respects you and respects your boundaries. And as you connect with someone who is fundamentally wanting what you want, who's craving depth and showing you, who's present with you, who's respecting your boundaries, guess what happens? That dimmer can start moving forward one step at a time. Another analogy I want you to keep in mind as we're evaluating how to open your heart with a man is because it's not a switch and it's not an on and off thing, it's a gradual thing. Think about it as a dance. You take one step, you share a little bit more vulnerable, a little bit more vulnerability, and he's going to react any number of given ways. If the reaction is one, that allows you to create trust in him, then you know that your next step is you're able to share a little bit more. Next time you see him, next conversation, or even within that same time, share one more thing and then continue that dance moving forward. The next one is he is clearly moving things forward in the dating process. He's not waiting for you to reach out to him constantly to ask you out. If he says, I want to see you, he makes it happen. He's not playing games. He's straightforward. He knows what he wants without being desperate, without smothering you. He's taking consistent action. The more consistency you see throughout time, and that's why I started with time is so important, because anyone can show up really connected, really awesome, really interested in you for a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks. As, as you progress through time, some of those guys who just have the adrenaline to begin with and didn't have the sustainability to make it happen will fall off the wagon. And those guys who have the capacity to move things forward will stay. So you understand through time that as he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, you can open a little bit more. The next one is he reciprocates with his own vulnerability, which I was alluding to at the beginning. You want a guy who, yes, he craves you sharing things with him. He understands your story, your past, 
what you want, your dreams, your aspirations, your fears, but he's willing to do the same. If this equation is uneven, then the risk is potentially higher because you're falling for a guy who is simply being a mirror to what you have to say, but not necessarily going the distance with you. So you want to understand that as he's sharing more things of his own, as he's getting emotionally naked with you, he's also investing. He's like, he's, <laughs> he's investing of himself, which makes it less likely for him to pull a dickish move on you because he would also be hurt. There's emotional connection, there's vulnerability, there's reciprocity. So as he shares more things vulnerably with you, you feel that there's more space for you to open your heart more. And the next one is, the seventh one, is he is consistent in his intentions, consistent in his excitement, consistent in his goals, consistent in his pursuit, consistent in his idea that he wants more through time. We talked about that in terms of he's moving things forward. This is one where you get a chance to take a step back and understand that the consistency in his actions, his energy, his pacing is there. If you take the steps of getting to know a guy, of really, no matter how excited you feel about him, no matter how much you want to share your entire life story, and at the end of that first date, think that you've known him forever, but really not knowing him forever or knowing him really well, if you understand that this is an ultra marathon versus a sprint, then at any moment in time where the guy is not respecting your boundaries, when he's not reciprocating vulnerably, when he's not being consistent, when he's playing games, you can pause and you can ask a question or you can say it didn't feel great or you can ask for more or you can decide if, if it's consistent enough in the bad way that you want to stop seeing him. But if you do it one step at a time, you'll be far more likely to A, trust yourself and trust in him. Hope this is helpful useful and insightful if it is and you want to learn how you can take the concept of this video further and enhance your capacity to attract great guys into your life and, and enter the relationship with them first link in the description will allow you to take my free training if you enjoy this video please uh, click like or thumbs up and share in a comment like what did you learn what did you take out of this that you can start practicing today and last but not least if you want my hand holding and help because you understand that understanding this here versus taking action are different and that there's a lot of help that can happen if someone guides you by the hand and customizes things for you and allows you to cut down years of the process then second link in the description will allow you to apply to see if you and I are a great fit to work together thank you so much for allowing me into your heart into your phone and as always I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life